the whole question of wondering whether to go back to South Africa is not a philosophical question. I think it's a question of instinct. There is something inside you that wants to go back because there is something in South Africa that doesn't exist wherever you may be. It doesn't exist in Europe, doesn't exist in North America, doesn't exist wherever. And it is absolutely important to obey this inner voice. I'm reminded by a poem uh, called Diluted Existence that appears in the book A Good Bite My Little Troubles. And uh, it goes something like this, you know, that it says, to degrade like bad cadence, to fail to act in accordance, to lead a diluted existence, tendencies to disobey the voices, to disaffirm the voice of instinct, to render existence more succinct. Instinct is better than the mind. Instinct is always as divine. Its path never to be confined. It's very important to listen to instinct. And I, I'm, I'm in the same situation. I've, I, I've lived outside. I've lived outside South Africa for more than 20 years. And now, all of a sudden, there's this thing that says to me, or oh, that wants to go back. And uh, I've been struggling with this thing, and I and I continue to struggle with it. But uh, uh, basically, that's what it is. On the question of life outside South Africa, a lot of people who live in South Africa believe that, you know, life outside South Africa is is rosy. It's like a paradise, and uh, a lot of people are yearning to go to South Africa. I mean, um, some people that I meet for the first time, you know, think that I live a very good life outside South Africa. Uh, but for, for those who already live outside know that that is a myth. One of the challenges of living outside South Africa is that, I mean, you come to, let's say, you know, Europe or North America and you've got your own qualifications, etc., experience and so forth. All of a sudden, your experience is not recognized. Now you have to start all over again. I live in Canada, so the first thing I came here, they said that I must have a Canadian experience. I came with my, you know, my, my diplomas and stuff, but they said, you know, do you have Canadian experience? I said, no, I don't have. They said, well, you know, uh, you're going to have to start somewhere, you know, and then work your way up. What? That is a cold reality of living outside. I've got friends, uh, some of them are doctors, work as dishwashers or or they clean, or they work as security guards, or they drive taxis, that sort of stuff. You know, they, they don't really live a good life. So it is tough outside here, and it's, and it's not so much your race, but uh, it's the fact that you are an immigrant that makes it very hard. So it is tough outside here, but eventually you'll make it. But even if you make it, um, you know, uh, you're still not accepted like everybody else you know so it's a very tough life and another time I'll try to probably make another video where we can actually discuss this issue in more detail another question of course is whether when you go back to South Africa you will be accepted whether you will be accepted back in South Africa I believe that you will be accepted back in South Africa I mean I was I was quite impressed with the one of the statements that uh, Mr. Zuma made when he was overseas and he was making this appeal that uh, all African descendants should go back to, to, to Africa, regardless of race, like, you know, white South African, Indian, whatever, you know, should really go back to, to Africa, because, um, and he pointed out that some people have made it financially, but, but not everybody has made it, but everybody has the skills, the education, which Africa needs. So, uh, it was a very good thing that we should actually, you know, go back to the country. I actually made a bit of a research uh, because my background is uh, software engineering, computer science, mathematics. So, and I, I actually did a research on internet uh, demographics, 
and uh, found that actually the next technological revolution is going to take place in Africa. So a lot of um, uh, entrepreneurs uh, were actually, especially from Europe, even North America, were actually going to South Africa because they believed that there was this, um, you know, this another explosion that's going to take place in terms of innovation, you know, because Africa is building infrastructures and so forth. I mean. We have 933 million people, and very soon we'll be, we'll be hitting a billion. So, um, and and there's only less than three percent of those people who are connected to the internet. So it's very important that if you're an entrepreneur and uh, you really want to be a successful person, I think you have a better chance of succeeding in Africa as opposed to in in England or or in France, Germany, or Canada or. United States, because these other countries are already established, their infrastructure is already cast in stone, so to speak, right? Competition is very fierce there. But uh, in Africa, you could actually become a, a gorilla of, uh, you know, the, the, the fiber optic jungle or the internet connection jungle or whatever, you know, and, and, and do very well. So anyways, that's all that I wanted to say in terms of that. And I just hope, I, I, I just hope that, you know, this addresses some of the questions, and I, 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 I'm, we are in the same boat. So I would like people to make more comments and respond with video stuff like that, so that we can all share these ideas, you know. And uh, we are all human beings. We love each other. Check this out. Do you know what I'm saying? Peace.